welcome everyone out there in the digital realm. I'm happy to have uh, uh, Gene Ha on here, um, four-time Eisner winner, uh, artist, writer. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining me um, here Hello, on the Zoom, <laughs> Zoom interview uh, with uh, social distancing and all of that. <laughs> um, but uh, to, to start first, uh, again, like I said, thanks again for coming on and, and having a chat with me. Um, I wanted the purpose of this uh, interview, again, was to have an opportunity to talk about your appearance at uh, um, SC Comic Con. Obviously, it's not happening you know, in March, and it got pushed to July, but, um, you know, I wanted to have some sense of normalcy about, uh, you know, chatting about the show. Um, so with that being said, can you tell me, with all the cons that I'm sure you have an opportunity to attend, and, you know, as packed as I'm sure your itinerary gets over the course of a year, especially during con season, what is it about uh, uh, South Carolina Comic-Con that draws you, so to speak? <laughs> Honestly, it's that... Um... Last year, I went to Heroes Comic Con for the first time, which is a great convention. Very art-focused. People there love great books. The huge star of the show was Star Stan Sakai, uh, which just means people love classic comic books, you know, really respect the art and stuff like that. But it's set in the middle of a banking district. Yes. So I was really excited to enjoy some Southern culture and some Southern cuisine and just not be in the Midwest. And I found out that there's a diner near... I couldn't find it. I couldn't find Southern food around me. Like the barbecue place had closed down recently and within walking distance of the convention center. Uh, yeah. So at that point, um, I found out there was a place called the Red Eye Diner a few blocks away from my hotel. So I just got really excited. I've never had Red Eye Gravy before. Oh. They didn't have Red Eye Gravy there. Okay. It's a big corporate chain place. They don't know anything about Southern food. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know what? I bet if I go to South Carolina Comic Con, beyond being a hopefully a great convention and definitely a good one, because I've never been there yet, they will also actually have some local food. So that got me really excited. Okay. All right. Foodie at heart. I'm a foodie as well. So, so yeah. I, I, I can appreciate that. Definitely. Yeah, um, you. you do not come to the Midwest generally for food. <laughs> so with uh, that being said, um, uh, as I said, that they, they moved their dates to uh, July. Um, have, has there been anything, you know, in that regard of, of if it might still still uh, happen in July? Because I know there are a couple of shows that are still happening in July, and they're actually themselves talking about, you know, oh, potentially moving. Yeah, like um, uh, uh, Comic-Con International, San Diego Comic-Con had a Right, reschedule. that small show, that small show, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, and then, then, of course, every show that was in the fall on the dates that all the summer shows are trying to reschedule to are then getting crowded into, so. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of a nightmare. Um, as far as I can, if I can give the example of places like uh, that have countries that have mostly gotten the pandemic under control locally, uh, which is Germany's beginning to get there, South Korea are there. They do not have large gatherings like concerts, uh, church, you know, big church gatherings and right. uh, comic conventions. So um, after we get this under control, I don't know when that's going to be and I hopefully by July, but even then we won't have it cured. So there's a big risk that big events, big conventions of all sorts, not just comic conventions will not happen, that we will not all be able to get together to uh, watch our favorite football teams, uh, watch our favorite rock stars and uh, pop stars and all that type of stuff inside of crowded spaces together. You know, everything where we're yelling and screaming and having fun together. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dance. yeah. Dancing, crowding at the bar to get a drink. Yeah. That's going to be tough. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what 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 comes of that and and how that happens. Because um, I, I know, like with some shows, I know I know it's still kind of up in the air. But like with uh, Comic Con International, for example, um, you know, there may be a potential that it might come online. But I'm like, I can't imagine Hall H. <laughs> uh, like a panel of Hall H being online, like it's just yeah. something about being in that space with you know, uh, w w with other fans out there of you know what it is that you're that you're experiencing as a panel that can't really be you know uh, yeah you can't really yeah without, you can't throw a you can't panel inside of Animal Crossing 
you can't, yeah, you can't replicate that. But uh, be that as it may, I find it a little, uh, you know, I find it interesting. So with, with uh, the, the a project that you have with May volume one and volume two, um, I find there's a little bit of irony in the fact that, you know, based on the story that you have of, of what, what that, that, in, the, that uh, story entails, the landscape that we're in now and how, how that, how it, uh, there, there's a lot, a lot of things that are, are relative about, you know, mad science, so to speak, or, or mystery, <laughs> all these things that we're, you know, uh, you know, dealing with in, in the, uh, in the world currently. So uh, can you talk a bit about that and, and uh, kind of that unexpected dichotomy between those two things? Oh man. Um, I mean, we're, I mean, we, well, okay. Just to be clear, I'm 50 years old. I was born in 1969. So right. I'm going to be, yeah, this summer I will be 51. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that exists now seems like unimaginable mad science. Uh, just the normal, every like what I'm, we're doing right now, this, this conference we're doing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, heck, I mean, when I first heard of email in the 1990s, I was like, what? You guys have this thing called email? That sounds amazing. You know? Hey. Yeah, I know. I got you. I've been old. I'm old enough to remember when the internet first started. So. Yeah. And uh, the idea that, uh, you know, I get to carry a mother box in my pocket and even <laughs> says Kirby comics, uh, you know, they were giant cubes that were like nine inches across, you know, to have a device like that. I mean, I can't teleport with this thing, but I can call a Lyft or an Uber. So, you know, it's not too bad. Well, maybe not now, but, you know, normally I can. <laughs> So yeah, so it's yeah um okay but yeah it's there's the thing where like um you're all we're always living in an age of wonders nowadays and it's yeah. always kind of this change my camera's slowly shifting on me over time let me center again um you know everything that seems uh commonplace and everyday now at one point was a wonder I mean just like uh mosquito netting is like one of the greatest health victories of all time of just like oh you can go to sleep and not catch malaria that's amazing you know that right. Yeah, uh, and just, oh God. I mean, as, as much as we talk about indoor plumbing, I mean, even just like the outhouse is a relatively recent in invention. Yeah. Which sp stopped huge spreads of disease across the United States. And um, so part of it is just what's going on in May is just, there's another world which a little before World War I got cut off from our world. Some, it got explored a bit by people from our world and they got cut off. And they develop mad science that's totally different than our mad science. And the things that are miraculous there are not the things that are miraculous here and vice versa. And when you travel between the two, it's very surprising to see what's different. Um, I mean, uh, they do not have, they, they have not perfected radio. They can do short transmissions, but they still mostly use like wires, wired lines and stuff like that. Um, television, video, the idea of trans, transmitting video and stuff like that, just uh, impossible. Um, but, you know, they also have like a, uh, Oh God, uh, they can make zombie soldiers and stuff like that and control them and uh, giant walkers. And um, they have, there's uh, there's one tribe that can, or one coalition that can make beasts that are like 300 feet tall, you know, uh, war beasts and stuff like that for their battles and stuff like that. Uh, another one can create earthquakes and eruptions of energy from the earth and stuff like that. And this all seems normal to them. And then coming over here and just seeing like, a, oh God, just like a highway of automobiles is like, how can you do that? How can you, you know, create that many, you know, traffic tra lights, computers, uh, internet conferencing. These are all things that are impossible there. And just, it just feels very different. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. Now we're living inside an age of wonders. Now we're going through an age also now suddenly of biological threats we have not seen for a hundred years that, which again is mad science from around the era of World War One. And just threats like that. It's just, yeah, it's a weird era we're living in right now. Absolutely. Always, absolutely. Yeah. So, what do you think? What do you think about all this? I mean, like, what what, what struck you about me? Um, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no problem. I guess it's just it, it was something that that came that I came across because just by the nature of again, um, uh, what we're dealing with now, and and uh, it it was something that, that drew me in, you know, immediately. And then on top of that too, with, with everything that's been going on, um, which I'm sure you're finding that you have, uh, that you're able to do too. Um, I'm reading 
uh, have an opportunity to read a, a lot more and to do, you know, a lot of things that otherwise, like, it's, it's just interesting, you know, I'm having an opportunity to, to get in front of, you know, way more com comic books than I otherwise, uh, you know, yeah. would have. Um, and also just, just in general, just because, you know, you're, you're here at, uh, at home and you're, uh, you're having an opportunity to do a lot of other things that you, that you would still do, Monty, but, you know, you're able to consume a lot more of it a lot quicker than you otherwise would. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you were talking about, like, how, uh, I saw that when I logged into Zoom that the subject of this is how um, coronavirus is going to affect comic conventions and the comic book industry, and you type that in as a subject. And a lot of things in the United States depend on how well the small business loans from the federal government, the small business, you know, uh, work employee protection act and stuff like that funds right. uh, get distributed out, which has been really badly done so far. And as far as I know, I've not heard of any comic shop saying, Oh, thank God we've been saved by the federal government, even though they're supposed to be, but hopefully that does come through before there's mass, you know, permanent closures of comic shops. And assuming that does happen, it will be a changed landscape if we don't go through complete, you know, crisis and entrepreneurs. Oh, there's only one earth left now. There's only one comic shop left in the United States left now. Um, right. Hopefully we don't go there. Uh, but if it does, uh, I'm assuming that uh, a lot of comic book creators, uh, especially ones who used to be working on say Marvel projects and we're told pencils down recently, uh, might be able to find uh, online audiences and right. personal projects. And a lot of comic shops are probably going to start moving more and more towards a model a lot of them do, which is digital. Yeah. Uh, well, not digital, actually. Uh, graphic novels, more, more and more to graphic novels, because uh, the idea behind a webcomic isn't that you necessarily make a lot of money because you have, you know, 50, you know, like if you sell a comic book, like uh, 20,000 copies, you're doing OK. If you sell like uh, 50,000 copies, you got a hit nowadays, which used to be like, you know, chicken feed numbers. Um, but nowadays, if you have a webcomic, you can, also, you can go up to like 500,000 followers, millions of followers. And it's not that you're making money off of most of these people. They're just part of your fan base and they're getting word out. They're, prom they're promoting your book. The people, you, but out of that huge number of people, a few of them are willing to spend money on merch, on print versions, uh, would be excited to meet you. It's a lot like, say, the music industry now where very few people make any type of living off of streaming music. Right. But the streaming music, Download. Chance, yeah, it gives them a chance to make money on other things, like concert tickets. Once we can all gather together and get sweaty and start screaming at somebody inside of a, like a mass of ten thousand people again. Right. And uh, that's, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say that's it's interesting that you should say that. It's actually was gonna be my next question was uh, you know I know there are other friends that I have that are you know in the comics industry and and it's been fascinating to see. Uh, you know, how they've gotten creative or what creativity they've been using in order to still, you know, get the work out there. Um, uh, thankfully, you know, just like you were saying with this, you know, they, we have some of the, you know, technological tools in place, you know, uh, it, it's hard to think if we didn't have some of these tools in place, you know, how it would still uh, happen, but, you know, folks are still, because I was looking at some of uh, the posts that you had on, on uh, uh, I believe it was on Instagram where, you know, just like with a, a, few, a few other friends of mine, you know, there's continuing to do commissions, you know, commissions don't stop, oh, yeah. you know, just because you're physically, you know, not in the same space, you can, you know, still uh, complete those commissions and you can still uh, find ways to get your work out there, whether it's here on Zoom, you know, whether it's uh, yeah. over Facebook, Twitter, what have you. So, you know, that's also been interesting in seeing, you know, how a lot of friends have gotten creative, but at the same time, you know, it is also interesting how it is a, um, how it's really determined about um, uh, what generation you are or just how, you know, inclined you are technologically to do something like that. Because, you yeah. know, you also have uh, um, folks that are in the industry and they, and they may still be, you know, adhere to, you know, the old way of doing things. And so, you know, they're still playing catch up of, of seeing that as a tool to use. So they, they haven't necessarily gotten that far yet. Yeah, I'm going to say, um, I am, I try to try to keep up to date on uh, how the online world works nowadays, which is basically understanding how the whole economy works. 
but sure. I have trouble. Yeah, I have trouble remembering the difference between vines versus twitches versus you know. And every few every like every two years, there's suddenly a set of new online forums that I have to relearn about. And then the, like nobody cares about Tumblr anymore. Tumblr's just dead, you know. And the ones I spend a lot of time working on are just gone. And uh, yeah, that's I realize that's a permanent condition at this point, as far as I can tell. Where uh, actually, I'm looking forward to the day where I don't need my Facebook because I hate <laughs> those guys. I love my friends on Facebook. I hate the people who run it so much. <laughs> They're just horrible people. <laughs> gotcha. They're gotcha. Just bad, bad people. <laughs> it's like well, a, yeah. It's, well, I use Lyft. I use Lyft for cars when I actually am able to go in public, you know, once all this is over and before. But it's because I don't know if they're good people, but I can't believe they're as bad as the people who run Uber. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, well, be that, I was going to say, be that as it may, I know we were talking a little bit earlier uh, about how um, there's a, with, with uh, events being postponed or canceled, whatever the case may be, uh, we're, we're pro more than likely coming upon um, trends where a lot of things are going to get backlogged. So, like with with that being said, oh, yeah. uh, have you have you found yourself having to really recalibrate? You know what what your overall itinerary looks uh, itinerary looks like. Um, seeing that some shows perhaps aren't moving, and then other ones may move like within a weekend of of you know a show uh -huh. that you already had planned or perhaps it may actually be the same weekend and, and how do you kind of determine okay i've already made a commitment to being you know at this show yeah um you know um, how's that going to work with one that now is is like within the the uh the same time of yeah. of, of that same show uh okay so my the, my current thinking is um i'm very hesitant to book new shows in general uh, let me see. Uh, if you've got me booked for your show already, uh, that commitment's good as long as we don't get canceled by the government or a health emergency or something like that. Um, let me see. If you move your show to a different date, it then depends on whether it's too close to other shows. Like, uh, there's a show I was going to do uh, that moved its date from the sum from spring to summer, then to fall. They had to move it twice, and their fall date turned out to be between two big shows. Like there's one free weekend between the two, but I was like, I do not want to that's do three big shows in a row. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's gonna be good. Yeah. So um, yeah, as long as there isn't some type of uh, schedule conflict, I will go for the new one. I'll try to go for the new day. Uh, but also I am not, I'm trying to set my life so that if I don't go to the, if the show gets canceled again, it will not mess me up too badly or anything like that. Um, it, I'm just making this, and for now, I'm making an assumption that anything could happen, but I'm trying not to make extra commitments. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. sure. Cool. Um, well, uh, I'm not, I uh, wanted to, you know, as I said, I wanted to kind of uh, touch base with you, you know, briefly, yeah. um, talk with you about, you know, like I said, about uh, your current work and, and also kind of just to pick your brain about, you know, as someone, you know, I'm on the media end, but as someone who's, you know, a frequent guest at, at a lot of these shows on that end as well, you know, what does that uh, look like for folks that, you know, perhaps are not aware of what, uh, of what goes, you know, on, um, you know, behind the scenes in that way. Yeah. Um, so uh, aside from that, can you tell folks uh, where they can find you? Oh, uh, you can find me at uh, genehaw.com. So uh, yeah, if you can get the spelling of my name. Um, also, if you search for me almost anywhere in any search window, uh, I'm usually the most, uh, the top option. result for any Gene Ha in the world, which uh, Brandon Troy, I mean, I don't know if you're the most famous Brandon Troy in the world, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm up there. I'm up there. Okay. On, 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 yeah. Yeah. But when you have a weirdo name like mine, you're all set. <laughs> I mean, you're going to come out as a top result more easily, so. Cool, cool, awesome. Well, Gene, again, thank you so much uh, oh, you. for hopping on. Um, stay safe. Uh, hopefully, you know, once all all of this, you know, starts to wind down and we get.